What I enjoy about the winter fishing at Homersfield, I guess is the challenge of it, especially regarding the carp fishing. There's something quite special about when you have to put in a little bit more extra effort and finally that bite alarm bursts into action. Another plus point is the water tends to go really clear, so the fish are in real top colours and they look so nice. And it's been really cold lately. This is probably the first sunny day we've had for a while. The reason I've sat in this swim, it's kind of the middle area of the lake and I've got a large gravel, I guess I'd describe it as a gravel runway that runs in front of this swim. And I feel that if I haven't seen any carp, if I'm in the middle area on this gravel strip, I feel there's always a few carp passing over the top of me and I've just got to persuade the odd one to dip down and eat a bit of food. The carp fishing this time of year is a softly, softly approach. Anyone who knows me in the summertime at Homersfield, I'm, I'm not shy of putting quite a lot of bait in. There's, there's lots of fish in here. But once it gets cold, the fish aren't feeding quite so hard and you have to go in with much less bait and just fish for one bite at a time. But the, the buzz of getting that bite in the tough conditions is, uh, is the reason I'm here. With all my carp fishing, I keep it relatively simple, I guess. I fish simple boily fishing, I put quite a few crumbed boilies in in the colder months, I think they give off a bit more attraction. But still, even this time of year, if you go in with two smaller baits and two finer pellets and things, you are just feeding roach. I've caught a couple of roach this morning, even on quite big boily hook baits. So the difference between here and other lakes in the winter is I probably have to use quite big hook baits to keep the rods in the water some mornings. If I could catch one carp today, I'd be more than happy. So the softly, softly approach single bright hook baits and just two or three spawns over each rod and whether I catch a roach, a bream or a carp the rig would go back out and I'd top it up with a little bit more bait. I think the key to catching a few fish in the winter time is to make sure you're fishing in front of the fish. I'll probably spend as much time walking around and looking for signs of fish as I do fishing. Sometimes it's, it's not as hard as you think to get a few bites when you've got fish in front of you and they they can group up a bit tighter in the winter and all be held up in certain areas. The reason I'm staring across the lake there is one cruising across the surface right now, which is very odd for this time of year. Like us, I think as soon as the sun starts shining, they like to come and feel it on their backs. Maybe I need to start fishing some zig rigs for the carp pretty soon. Location is so important in the winter time. The fish can really be grouped up tight in certain areas and they are a lot more catchable than you think when you're fishing where the fish are. If I'm completely honest, my, my winter approach for the carp fishing at Homersfield is very much like my summer approach, especially when it comes to rigs. Probably my favourite go-to carp rig is the Slip D rig, and I fish a pop-up. I do like quite a, a big hook, either a size 4 or a size 6. The reason I like the pop-up is because the hook sits clear of the bottom, clear of any leaves or debris that might be on the bottom, and I feel I get a slightly better hook hold. The only time I'll really change from the pop-up presentation as I will use quite a big snowman hook bait. And this is mainly because there's so many roach present in the lake and that can be a little bit more roach proof. So if I'm getting quite a few pickups off the roach in the winter whilst carp fishing, I'll swap to those bigger hook baits. I think from my opinion, it's much more important where you put the rig and how much bait you apply around the rig. I think once you've got the carp feeding in front of you, the rig to me plays quite a small part in catching the carp. The one thing that does make a difference by using these pop-up rigs is I think I get slightly better hook holds, which means more of my takes are converted to fish in the landing net. If I'm completely honest with a lot of modern day carp rigs, I think they catch more anglers than carp. I'd be quite confident of spending a season on this lake, knotless knotting with a bottom bait on a hair rig and catching plenty of carp. Oh, I think that's probably just roach having a tease. But we're away then. Had a strange aborted take. It might have just been a roach, but the hook point isn't quite as sticky sharp as I'd like it. So I'm gonna fine tune it and get it back out there and hope I get a second chance. It was quite a roachy bite. The bobbin was just bouncing up and down, but it was worth picking the rod up and just trying it. 
it feels nice and sharp now. So I'll get the rig back on the spot and hope I get a second chance. The carp fishing in the winter time and my application of bait in the winter is a little and often approach. And I try to keep things as neat and tidy as possible. You'd noticed I use the marker sticks to wrap the rod out and the spod is wrapped out as well. And I just want to be dropping two or three spoms over the rig sort of every couple of hours. I find you draw more interest. If I just put loads of bait out, I can sit on it for hours and hours and hours, but that little and often approach will get your bite much quicker. The feeding spells of the carp are a lot less frequent in the winter time, but quite often you can get two or three bites in a row just as the temperature rises or the light fades. So I just want just enough bait in the swim just to get a few bites. One thing you want to remember when you're baiting up is you can always put a bit more bait in, but you can't take it back out again. So like I say, two or three spoms at a time. And after any bite, whether it's a roach, a bream or a carp, just top the swim up with a little bit more bait. My standard mix that I spot out at Homersfield is the, the coarse pellets that we get here at the lake from Martin. That's almost a, a natural food for the carp in here. Plenty of boilies. I do like crumbling a few bits of boilie in there as well. I think it just leaks off the, the flavours and the attractants a little bit more. I'm sure it attracts roach and other fish, but I don't mind getting different fish feeding on the spot. And I wouldn't go carp fishing anywhere without some tins of sweet corn. A boost with a bit of liquid. I've got some Sticky Baits Manila. Just livens the mix up a little bit and gives it a nice scent trail. be perfect. Well, other than that one carp cruising across the surface, I didn't see any more signs of fish in front of me. So I decided to reel the rods in and have a walk around the lake. And the wind was blowing more southwesterly in the morning and it now swung southerly, which blows straight into the swims in front of the lodge. And I'm pretty sure I saw a carp poke its head out between the islands. And that was all I needed to persuade me to move. So I quickly packed the gear up and moved round to the lodge swims for the last few hours of the afternoon. And just as I was thinking of packing up, the right hand rod has burst into life and how about that for a lovely winter common carp. That certainly cheered me up on a cold winter's day. Really pleased with that one, especially on a winter's day. They always seem a little bit more meritous in the winter time. And I thought a blank was on the cards for a little while. So um, it's a bag of nerves playing this one. It's been a little bit warmer today, but the, the water is still freezing. There we go. How about that for a, a winter carp? Really pleased with that. Thank you, buddy. Over the years, so much has been written about our family's history being involved with carp fisheries and carp farms. 2022 will be our 60th year. Um, I thought it'd be a good idea to actually put our own story on film. And that's why I've decided to have a whole year's filming at Homersfield Lake. Over the next year, we want to bring you a series of films that just isn't about fishing, although you're going to see members like Phil Spinks and other members showing them how they fish the lake and all the species that they catch, whether it be carp, the tench, the roach, the catfish or the bream, it's not going to be another series of fishing videos on how to catch fish. Uh, we want it to be so much more than that. We want to show you how we're running our fishery, tell our story about our 60 years involvement in the carp fisheries and carp farms that dates back to the 1960s with Waverley Valley Lakes, our fisheries in Essex at Fishers Green, um, our place at uh, Hertfordshire Chewing Mill, Yew Tree Fisheries, and now here, of course, at Homersfield Lake. 
I've decided to do this now mainly because next year will be our 60th year being involved in carp fisheries and carp farms. Also the fact that so much has been written in the past about our family's history and what we've done and there's been so much misinformation put out there that I just thought the time was right to tell our story.